Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be looking into the harder way on how to load uh, maps uh, into our game. So uh, this time we're going to get rid of this array. Uh, the problem with this is that we're not actually dynamically sizing the array uh, that we want. We're just we're specifying specifying a size that is larger than the map or uh, that's going to be uh, really large so that we don't exceed the limit right and this isn't a good way to handle it because uh, we might be allocating space that we actually may not need or may not be using also uh, for this method if we want to have like different lines or d d different lines have different lengths or etc etc or or we want to have it longer one way or etc etc but we won't be able to do that uh, because of the way it's set up because arrays have a fixed value every single index in the array has to be every single element in the array has to be 10 spaces across and 10 spaces down but what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating a list okay a two-dimensional list and uh lists are are like arrays but they are like dynamic arrays each element within the list uh a list is, can be resizable so in a multi-dimensional list think of each row in the list having its own distinct value so one row could have uh uh, five items in there. Second row can have ten. Another row can have thirteen. Another row can have one, etc., etc. Whereas in an array, each row has uh, the same value, right? With a uh, list that that isn't so. Uh, so what we're gonna do is that we're going to, and if you wanna if you wanna convert the list into an array and store it into an array, then by all means you can do that for for whatever reason you want to. I think you just do uh, dot to array or you can have to do that within a method but I think you just take the name of the list and put to array yeah you just put it into the array and you allocate it in, into the array right so but anyways uh, we're gonna keep it as a list for now so what we're gonna do is that uh, for each line what we want to do is that we want to add in uh, uh, each index would into line. So first of all, to add in to add in a list, we had to put in a, basically a multi-dimensional list is like a list of lists. So in order to add in something to the list, we have to add in another list or a single or list. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna be creating a list called integer and let's name it temp map. Okay. So this is going to be the temporary value. So this is going to represent the rows, uh, each individual row within our map file. Okay. And okay. So if we go down here, what we're going to do is that we're going to be taking our temp map and we're going to do temp map dot add line array int dot parse line array. I. So we're storing all of that within our temp map, right? So after, oh sorry, I forgot a bracket. So after we've done that, and for as for the dimensions, sorry to cut myself off, but uh, for the dimensions, we don't need that. We can get rid of the dimensions now. Um, we can get rid of this as well. So all we need is the line and the line array. So we store all the values in, into our row or, or into our temp map. So after we've done all that stuff and added our line within it, all we have to do is take our map and add in our temp map list. And once we do that, it will add that row within our map file and therefore uh, we'll be able to uh, store it in. So what we want to do is since we don't have the dimensions anymore, what we want to do is do map dot count. So the map dot count is gonna basically give us the column number, okay? So uh, that should be fairly simple. So which line number we're working with, and then we're gonna do map i dot count, which is going to give us the index within that row. Or yeah, so what what number row what we're in? So for example, if we look at our map file. Uh, this map dot count will represent which line number or which column number we're talking about, and then the uh the second one map i dot count is going to represent which number within that line or within that row, etc., etc. So once we do that, 
uh all we have to do is that okay since it is uh since it is a list what we need to do is we need to have our we need to do it, put it as a jagged array rather than a regular array. So we say if map i j is equal to one, uh, then we, then we draw the specified texture at a certain position. Uh, the thing about it this time is that instead of doing it i j like we did before, I believe we gotta put it as j i, uh, just because of the way that we add in the values. Uh, so, so we're running this, but we're not getting anything. So. I'll try to change this back to IJ in case I messed up or in case I was wrong. Nope. Uh, so I'm going to pause this video and figure out what's going on. Okay, that was easy. Okay, so uh, yeah, I was right about keeping it J and I. The problem was that I forgot to reset the uh, temp map equal into a new list. So when we're adding, uh, uh, remember, a list can be resizable and anything can be added to it. So basically, once we add to the list and we add our map to the list, we have to set our temp map in equal to a new list uh, to make it start from zero again. If we don't do this, then all it's going to do is just add upon what the last was, the previous list before. So we need to set temp map you go to our new list um, right there and then we do uh, drawing it from j times map texture dot width and i times map texture dot height so if we were to run this program uh, we get our map that we had last tutorial uh, now to see why uh, we do j times uh, j times whatever instead of i times uh, the the width uh, the reason being is the way we load it in so remember that um, where first this is going to represent the map is representing the the column number or the line number and the j, so i is representing the line number and j is going to be representing the 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 number within that line so in order since we're doing different numbers within that line j is going to be representing each of these values right here so we're doing j times the width of the other one so then it draws it on the right side of it or draws it beside it and then we're doing i times texture height because since it's representing the line number we're basically drawing we're looking at what we're drawing vertically and if that concept seems a bit too confusing for you just just uh, think about it uh, rewatch the tutorial etc etc uh, until you actually grasp it it might take a while to grasp but it's a fairly simple subject but that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and bye